Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your JavaScript tutorial series. This video, we're going to go over the concept of callback functions and how those work in JavaScript and what makes those possible. Check out the previous two videos if you want a little bit more of the foundations of functions and check out the upcoming videos if you want some hands-on exercises. Now, before we get started, please be sure to check out our sponsor, Dev Mountain. Are you looking for a JavaScript web development bootcamp? What about an iOS bootcamp? Dev Mountain offers classes online and in person with housing at no additional cost. Learn how to build real world applications and get a job in the industry through Dev Mountain's career centric program. Whether it's web development, iOS, user experience, or quality assurance, Dev Mountain has a class for you. Let them know I sent you their way and they'll give you $250 off the tuition. Link in the description. Now, in order for you to understand what a callback function is inside of JavaScript, you need to understand how JavaScript works with functions. Functions in JavaScript are what are known as first class citizens or first class objects. And basically what that means is you can treat a function as if it's any other object. Not entirely sure why it's called first class because the fact that something's first class makes me feel like it gets special privileges, but in JavaScript, that's not really the case. First class actually means it's treated normally. It's a weird choice of words in my opinion, but <laughs> whatever. Basically, what we're saying here is that compared to other languages where functions are just functions, inside of JavaScript, they get special privileges because they are treated as if they're any other object, because they are. So what that means is all the stuff you can do with an object, you can also do with a function. If you think about an object, well, an object has properties, you can put properties on a function. You can pass objects as parameters, you can return objects, you can assign them to variables, all of these things you can do with functions. And this allows us to take a functional approach to programming when we're working with JavaScript, which is where functions are kind of the, the building blocks for building an application rather than going through code procedurally. This allows us to go through code in a functional nature with JavaScript, which is where functions are the building blocks for our application. Now the concept of a callback function is just when we pass a function as an argument to another function and that function invokes the function we passed in. So it looks a little something like this. Here we have some function and we're passing in something to it but in this case, we're passing another function. And then inside of the bigger function here, our function is executed. So the thing we passed in is brought into the function body and it's executed. So what I wanna do now is I want to go through the syntax of how to do something like this. We'll just give you a stupid example and then we'll go through something you might actually see in the real world. So sometimes there will already be functions that exist that we will give a function to. Other times we ourselves are going to create a function to take another function. So the concept where we create a function to take a function, the, the bigger function in that situation is known as a higher order function. So back in our example, the function that took another function, this one here is known as a higher order function. And that's just a term you might want to familiarize yourself with. All right, so let's go through the process of creating a higher order function. All right, it just started pouring outside, so I apologize if the audio is a little rainy, <laughs> but I'm already halfway through the video, so we're gonna make it through. So we created a function, it's called do something, and what is it going to take as an argument? Well, we, create, we can create one parameter, and if you remember, JavaScript is not statically typed, so we don't actually have to worry about the type. All we have to do is use a variable as normally we would. So we can assign a function to this variable, no problem. Then on the inside of this function, all we would do is call x. So x gets passed in, and then we invoke x on the inside of our function. So how would this look in the calling? Well, we can create a variable. And I create a function here. This is an arrow function. Just throwing that out there. Just uh, We're going to get into arrow functions here soon. But basically, you can create a function anyway, but we need to be able to assign it to a variable. And one way to do that is to use an arrow function or a function expression, if you want to look that up. So then what we can do is we call do something and what we're going to pass into here is my func. And I'm gonna capitalize that F. And when you do this, you don't use the parentheses because that will invoke the function. We just want to pass the function itself and it's going to be invoked on the inside here. So my func gets assigned to X and then on the inside of this function, we invoke 
that function. So my func is going to be executed here. Now I think I got all the syntax right, but obviously I can't execute it to make sure, but it's going to look something very similar to this, and I'm sure we'll go into this in the upcoming videos. Now I wanted to call out the return here. So the function we're executing is going to return five multiplied by five, or 25. But we're not really returning anything here. So if you wanna be able to get that value back out, basically we need to return this function call. So we would say return and then invoke x. Now this here is not going to return the function, it's going to call the function and return whatever the value is. So since x is given the myfunc function, it's going to return five times five. That's gonna be returned from this do something and ultimately it's going to be returned here, which means we need to do something with that value. So if you wanted to console log it, you could, or you could assign it to something like so. All right, cool, so it's gonna look something like that, probably. <laughs> now what I wanna talk about is a little bit on asynchronous callbacks. So let's create another function that we can assign to a variable. This time I'm going to use a function expression. So this time we're creating a variable, it's called do something, we're going to assign it a function, and let's just say all this function will do is do a console log. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass this to another function called set timeout. So set timeout is a higher order function. So it takes a function as an argument. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in do something. And then as the second argument here, it's actually going to take a number of milliseconds. So we'll just say 2000. Now what's going to happen is this set timeout is going to invoke this function for us after two seconds has passed. But the thing here is that it's asynchronous. So it's actually going to continue in our code. So whatever is right down here, it's going to start executing that. And after two seconds has passed, it'll break from this, go back and execute this function here, and it'll console log done. So this is pretty interesting because you can have a series of function calls here or logs down here, and you realize that this one actually happens after some of these ones are executed. And that is the basis of asynchronous callback functions. When you have an asynchronous callback function, the function will be called at some time in the future. In this case, two seconds. The concept of something being asynchronous is that it doesn't have to be waited on in order for the, the following code to start executing. This concept is going to come up a lot in JavaScript, especially if you're working with single page applications. So a single page application is when you basically build a web application, but everything is in one page, basically <laughs> a single application. So if on that page you click load data, for example, rather than taking the user to a new page with all that data loaded, it's going to asynchronously get that data and load it into that position on the page. So you may have heard of Ajax, for example, asynchronous JavaScript and XML. This is a way to implement this functionality if you want a particular part of a page to load without doing a page refresh, you can load that data asynchronously. Oftentimes when you're using JavaScript with some API, you will have callback functions for if something fails or if something succeeds. So if, if the data is retrieved successfully, then execute this function. Otherwise, execute something else. So it's very important that you understand this concepts and it all comes back down to how functions work and how they are objects themselves. When you think of functions as purely objects, you can start thinking in this functional way where we can pass functions to other functions and return functions from functions. So hopefully this video was a good introduction to callback functions as well as asynchronous callbacks. Some people will not actually consider a callback a callback unless it's asynchronous. I would probably disagree with that though, but I'm not gonna get into all that. <laughs> Basically, you can call functions inside of functions and it's cool, so you definitely wanna learn it. All right, thank you guys. Please be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.